Ah, oh, I missed seeing that as a kid. I never, I never got the later version of the BIOS. I, I had a, a original Sega CD, but yeah. There's one more thing we can play for <clears throat> a short amount of time. This is Final Fight CD, often regarded as the best version of the original Final Fight, like outside of arcade, anyway. Of course, it's not made. Metro for... City, <laughs> a well-known crime capital, has been ruled by violence and death for many years. Listen to that, Spets. A fact which the newly elected mayor and former street fighter Mike Hager plans to change. At the center of the problem is the huge gang known as Mad Gear. Mad Gear controls all of the major criminal activity. Look at all the Street Fighter characters. When they learned of Hager's plans, they took immediate action to bring this new mayor under their control. Sometime in 1992. Hello, Mike Hager here. Hee hee hee, Mr. Hager. So pleased to make your acquaintance. I believe you know who I am. Don't hang up. We have a little business proposition for you. Your daughter for your cooperation. And oh shit. Throw in the regular monthly bonus to your salary if we offered before. What? What happened to Jessica? Who is this? Not so fast, Mike. Turn on your TV. You son of a what have you done to her? What have you done to her? But we'd enjoy the opportunity. Listen to reason, man. Why make your job difficult? Just let us do as we please, like the mayor before you did. Yeah, I tried turning it up a little bit. Guy, Jessica was kidnapped. Jessica? My sweetheart since childhood. Oh, what? The Mad Gear must pay. She's my friend, too. Count me in. <laughs> oh yeah, she's my friend too, I forgot. <laughs> so, the Super Nintendo version of this doesn't have Guy. This version does. And it has a time attack. Okay, jump, attack, jump. Okay, that works. Oh yeah, Mania, fuck that. <laughs> uh, I'm... Terrible at Final Fight. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of Final Fight. Like, I'd rather be playing Streets of Rage, but I think it's worth showing off uh, CD version because the CD version is better. Let's take a CD version. Well, we gotta play as Haggard, don't we? Look at guys, small as hell. We need more wrestlers as mayors. What's the worst that could happen? I spent an LP of this a long time ago, or at least the Super Nintendo version. Long time ago. Gut punch, or kitty punch, kitty punch, kitty punch. Fight me! Ow. No mercy, come here! I mean, it was Hollywood. And Axel Rose and Doug with a D. Drop kick. Oh. One of the buses open. <clears throat> but does it sound better now? Oh, 
Okay, good. I have this pipe. Fight me! Ah, oh, you fatty! My like, Speech Rays definitely drew a lot of inspiration from this game. Like, you see those, some of those dudes with the weird coats? Those are the same kind of guys you find in the Streets of Rage. Uh, the Fat Men, there's like these fat, fire breathing men in, uh, in the Streets of Rage 2. I, are they in 1 also? I don't remember, it's been a while since I played 1. One's not that great, but two, yeah, two's wonderful. Three's pretty good. <clears throat> it's like another two, but it's not as good as two, in my opinion. I think in most people's opinions. Oh, hey, fuck you. I love a good German suplex. Ugh. Fight me! Mm. Ahoy there! Ow. Go boxy. Everybody does boxy. It's funny how Poison became the, the famous one when she wasn't even the first one to pop up in this game. Or the first of the, of the lady models to pop up. Round one complete. Fight me! But even Streets of Rage 1 feels like way more smooth than Final Fight. I, I, why don't they make a new Streets of Rage game? It'd be so good! Maybe they figured that Yakuza is like good enough. Which, you know, Yakuza is great, but. Actually, I take it back. They are making a new Streets of Rage. There's Streets of Rage 4 coming out with you know, kind of old man Axel, and Blaze hasn't aged a day because you know that wouldn't be sexy, I guess. <laughs> oh, oh, god damn it! And this guy is inspired by Andre the Giant, Andre. Andre Jr. Andre being how you would say uh, Andre in Japanese, so yeah. Everybody loves wrestling, or at least everybody that likes that fun likes wrestling. Or at least, okay, that's not even totally true. If you like main roster, you probably don't like fun. Because <laughs> main roster is so terrible. I could go on a wrestling rant for a while. I fucking hate main roster WWE now. It's NXT, AEW, or NWA for me. It's good stuff. Like, I want the wrestlers to have fun. Most of them on main roster do not look like they're having fun. Fun is kind of an intangible thing, but you can tell when when they're having a good time. Fun is an infectious sort of thing. There are some people that are happy just to see other people happy. Some people have fun by seeing other people have you know fun with them or whatever. I uh, MMA is fine. I don't really have any complaints about MMA. I just never really got into it. I was more into the spectacle of, uh, of wrestling. Although, had I not had uh, opportunities today, or uh, you know, other options for wrestling today, if it was just WWE main roster and MMA and that was it, I'd probably just switch to MMA. Get him with the splat! Ow! <laughs> <coughs> 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 
You're no match for me, Andre. Boosh! Good old pile driver. Followed by a splash and a German. <laughs> Gotta love a pile driver. Andre just keeps coming back for more, man. Ow, ow. Ow. Oh, God, I can't get my spinning lariat. Ow. Oh, that's right, fanboy. NWA, AEW, and um, the only thing I really like of it of WWE anymore is NXT. But even then, I don't make too much of a point to watch NXT. I just kind of need a break from WWE in general. It's nothing against NXT though. But AEW, like, it, and I probably wouldn't have even given AEW and NWA a chance if not for the fact that the main roster has been shitting it up so much lately. And I'm not blaming the wrestlers, I'm blaming the horrible creative and Vince. Vince just needs to go, man. Um, but because I was so desperate for, for something fresh, so that I could have a chance to love wrestling again, like, okay, AEW's doing a thing, I don't really know any of the wrestlers there, but let's give it a go. And NWA was just like, okay, well, it's only an hour, let's let's try that, what's the worst that could happen? And I'm having fun with the old school format, the old st studio format, it's really cool. It's a blast from the past. Me being a guy that loves retro stuff, it really appeals to me. Well, AEW gives me something absolutely fresh. Uh, I get to see wrestlers having fun. Uh, the AEW, or the, the NWA guys look like they're having a lot of fun, too. And that's super important. Ow! Stop! Stop! stop give me a freaking knife! I don't know much about wrestling. That's okay, man. I mean, fake fights for fun. I, I, I guess that's that's one way to put it. It's it's more appropriate to say it's scripted, right? I mean, they are like they're not really punching each other in the head, but like stuff like the chair shots and stuff, the slams they take. Yeah, those those are real. Uh, you can protect the you can do protected slams and stuff, protected hits so much. But I mean, at some point, some of it is real, right? Uh, people do get hurt, uh, you know. Like, it, it's kind of hard to defend wrestling in a way. It kind of goes back to the whole storytelling thing we were talking about earlier, right? Where, you know, a, a good story can go a long way, and you don't really get, like... <clears throat> you usually don't get stuff like that with MMA or boxing or stuff like that. Usually it's just a bunch of trash talk, which is fine. That could be a storytelling in and of itself. And a lot of times with, with wrestling, you'll get bad stories, but when you get a good story, it's great. Because you have, you have the, the good guys and the bad guys. You're supposed to cheer the bad guys and, you know, uh, boo the bad guys, cheer the good guys. Stuff like that. The old hurricane kick did not work. Oh. Uh, it's totally fine to be ignorant about wrestling. It, it's totally fine. It's... The worst I could have in NWA is seeing how thin-skinned some wrestlers and wrestling fans can be. Are you talking about like the whole uh, cornet thing, or because because I have I have I have thoughts on on that. Yeah, okay. Here, here's the thing about what cornet said. I won't get to, to say what it, what he said because it, it it wasn't right. Okay. Um. <clears throat> From what I can gather, he's speaking out of ignorance. He, it seems like he really didn't know what he was like saying there, because it's there's a story behind the joke he made. Um, like I, I don't believe he's actually racist or anything. It's just uh, you know it, it's it's a it's a joke that doesn't work in this day and age, right? Um, I, and I for one like. I wasn't that upset by what he said. I was like, mm, it's probably a th good thing to say. I would have rather he like just come on screen and go, okay, whoops, I uh, that was probably an oopsie. But yeah, I think he kind of handled it wrong. I think a lot of it was handled wrong. I think people kind of overreact to it. Because um, I'd rather it be a learning moment. You know what I mean? I don't think we get anywhere by just 
you know, when somebody makes a mistake, we just condemn them forever. And we want them to just lose everything they've worked for. I, I don't think that accomplishes anything. I, I want I want people to learn and say, okay, this this is why people don't like it when you say that, or why this is this is why this is a stereotype. They go, oh, okay, I honestly didn't know that. But it, you know, like it, it's a shame because like I don't like his um, his take on modern wrestling. Like he just. Anybody that likes AEW for the most part is just uh, just a loser, right? And that's just not right. Uh, open up a little bit, you know. Um, but I still respect the man for what he's done for the business. Um, I loved having him on the commentary team. I thought that was great. That like he's perfect for that. He is so perfect for for a role like that. It's it's just such a shame with everything that happened. A yeah, stupid old joke, and people got too bad shape. Yeah, I, I agree. Like I said, I I, I didn't care for the, the joke. I was like, eh. like when I when I first heard their excuses for it, like people were saying, oh, it's, it's a starvation joke. Like, come on, guys, you know what it is. But then he was explaining it, like, no, he he really does. He, he really does mean he has a as a starvation joke. It was actually a thing in the '80s for you know about to be made fun of, which I don't think it's cool either, but I mean, okay, I have some context now. You get to understand it a little bit. It's still wrong, but I mean, it's it's important to understand where somebody might be coming from. Otherwise, if you really do want to make things better, you know, it's hard to start on that when you don't know where they're coming from in the first place. It's like you're taking the stabs in the dark as to how to fix something. It's like trying to fix a car when you don't actually know what's wrong with it. We've we never been under the hood before. <clears throat> Oof. Oh god, I'm terrible. Like, okay, here, here's, the, here's the thing about the, the, the political moron thing. Um... While I'm on his same side of the spectrum, I think he goes about it in a horrible way. Um, I don't, I don't want to get into that too much. Like this is this is supposed to be fun. Um, I, I agree with part of his sentiment, I should say, uh, but I, th I think he goes about it very poorly. And he, he seems to draw inspiration from the wrong sorts of people. I'll put it that way. Don't, again, I don't want to get too much into it. It's like, uh, like it, it, it's kind of my escape from, you know, for, for a while I got back into politics and stuff like that. Back in the, you know, 2015 when, you know, all that stuff was going on, the election and stuff like that. And I, and I stayed with it for for years after that. But like after a while, I was just like, that's all I hear on YouTube now. It's it's old. I I, I want to. I, I miss listening to the old stuff I used to, you know. I won't get into that here, but like there was other way more interesting stuff I used to listen to, and I miss that. So now I just feel like I need an escape from all that. Like I, I still stay well enough informed, right, so that when the time comes for me to make one decision or another, I think I've got a decent enough like to stand on. But until then, like I just like. I, I've had enough. Oh, listen to that music! <laughs> Look at his eyes! <laughs> yeah. So that's something we can agree on. As I've heard it put before by another channel, the stuff like that is just, it's its fun poison. It just poisons any s sorts of fun people try to have. It's like, eh, can we, can we pass on that for a while? Uh, can, we, can we stop calling each other Nazis and cucks for like two minutes and just have some fun? Eh. It's a little much. Oh, hi there, you're poison, right? Yeah, you're poison, there we go. There's the real lady. Yes, I believe she's a lady. <laughs> if she really is packing, well, 
that, 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 that's fine. Whatever. Not my thing, but it's fine. Ow! Like, I think I've heard it s said before about like the the actual people that made this game. Like, no, that's that's not the deal with her. I forget how that, that all started though. Maybe someone else on the team was like, oh man, that might be a thing. Dudes get the most confused boners when it comes to poison. Like, wow, she looks great, but man, I've heard things like, oh. <laughs> <coughs> this track is amazing. Ow. I mean, be, yeah, yeah. I'm glad Steve Bennett and Wade Barrett. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm uh, like, I'm not a huge Wade Barrett fan, but I have heard him on commentary and stuff before. Right? And he, he's he's a good talker, right? He just doesn't really do anything for me in the ring. He's just kind of he's just kind of there. Look at this boy. Ow! Ow! Stop it! Yeah, Lucha, Lucha Underground is is not good. I think the only thing that might be worse than Lucha Underground right now is probably Ring of Honor. Like, that, that is, like, if Lucha Underground's a sinking ship, uh, Ring of Honor is a sinking ship that's also decided it's going to set itself on fire because it felt it wasn't doing enough harm to itself. You know, she'll get a good replacement for a coordinate. I think so, too. I am super interested to hear that. I'll be, um, I have plans to, to buy the, the pay-per-view this Saturday. Which is really weird. I've never really bought pay-per-views before, uh, before this year. I actually bought full gear. It's like a, it's a lot of money, but it's like I want to support this, and I think they're gonna put on a good show, which they did, in my opinion. Um, the NWA pay-per-view Into the Fire is like half the price. I forgot to do the pre-order thing for it. I could save five bucks, but whatever. <laughs> I keep trying to do uh, uh, Axel's uh, Rising Dragon thing. Why is he getting a gun? That's bullshit. <laughs> well, I guess I guess you play till we run out of credits. But yeah, I, I plan on buying that that pay per view because I want to support NWA also. We, we we need we need healthy competition for wrestling. Like like WWE ran the market for so long. And without any competition, they stagnated because they knew that no people had nowhere else to turn, and that sucks. We need options. Oh my god, this fucking prick! <laughs> the knife, just the fucking knife at him. It's gonna be a good push. Like I wouldn't mind see, seeing Cornet back. Uh, again, I really like his his stuff. I wish he'd lighten up on AEW fans or people that like things that he doesn't like. That fucks me up. Like, it's so confusing for me. Like, I really like his take on wrestling, but on the other hand, like, dude, give other people a chance. If you don't like it, that's fine. I'm not forcing you to like things. But stop calling people a bunch of bunch of fuckwits because they like something different. That's, that's fucked up. Let people, like, there's so many different ways to enjoy wrestling, and the variety is great. Man, this is rough times here. I'm sure this is boring, Henrique. I'm sorry. But it's nice to actually have somebody to talk wrestling with, especially stuff that isn't WWE. So, I, I, I'm, I'm relishing it while I can. <laughs> what the hell? That wasn't there. Boo! Oh, God. These flames are terrible. Yeah, yeah, they didn't care about TNA Impact. Like, TNA, like, was nothing to them. It's a shame about, t about, about TNA because, like, most of the time, they were awful, but man, when they did stuff right, it was great. Ow. Yeah, just, I, we, just, we just need more, more, more competition. Like, like, people automatically assume that, you know, when somebody gets released from WWE, oh, they're going to get scooped up by AEW. I, that's not necessarily what I want. Like, like I, I want... Uh, there needs to be more competition than just those two. I need. There needs to be more promotions that pop up, more, more names going to other smaller promotions or whatever. Right? I mean, it's it's not that long ago that uh, Aaron Stevens, right, in uh, in NWA, that he was 
uh, on the big stage in in WWE. That, that, that's more of the kind of stuff I want to see. Freaking Mr. Anderson in uh, in, w in WA. That's neat. Ow. I'm getting introduced to wrestlers I've never heard of before. Like, I've never heard of Thunder Rosa. I think she's cool. A lot of people in AEW I've never heard of before. I think they're cool. Like, my only exposure to Kenny Omega was just uh, like some of the, f the few uh, New Japan matches I've seen. He's great. Uh, I'm glad that, that Mox is actually getting a chance to be him in AEW. I, I loved him in WWE at first, but then it's just like I'm trying to do all kinds of goofy shit with him. <laughs> Appreciate that, Henrique. Thanks. Um, give me those two hours of... That's in the way. Yeah, yeah. I, that's the cool thing, right? Like, Tuesdays, I've got AEW Dark, which is... Which, is a great idea for how to handle their dark matches. Like, like technically, WWE has that too with main event, but they don't ever advertise it. And it's nothing but the bottom of the card. AEW Dark, you can see Young Bucks sometimes. You can see Kenny Omega. Uh, you, they give you a reason to tune in. Um, so, so on Wednesdays, I've got two hours of, of AEW uh, with Dynamite. And on Tuesdays, I've got an hour of NWA, and I've got an hour of AEW Dark. It's great. Like, I, I sleep through Raw and SmackDown now. It's wonderful. Like, I was keeping up with it for just because I felt obligated to, because that's 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 wrestling. I like wrestling. But I'll just listen to, to podcasts now to get my fix of that, and have fun wa actually watching the shows I want to watch. And not just, like, hate watch. You know what I mean? I heard Jimmy had to define it wrestling Jimmy Havoc's nuts. Like, I'd heard the name before, but I knew, like, nothing about him. Same with, like, uh, Joey Janela, uh, Darby Allen. Darby Allen's great. Oh, man, he's one of my favorite new wrestlers. Well, new to me, anyway. Oh, no. Uh, it's it's great to see Dustin Rhodes at 50 years old, like 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 getting a push, getting some time. It's amazing how great a shape he's still in. He looks like he's he's just loving life right now. MJF is like the best heel. I mean, it's it's this is the second coming of, of Jericho, and it he might even be better. Like like I I want to pay attention to Twitter because of MJF. He is. He, even Cornette likes NJF. So that's something. <laughs> and what is like, what a fu like, I can't help but smile every time I'm like, wow, what a fucking dick. <laughs> like, this is a guy you, you love to, you love to hate. It's perfect. He does such a good job. But hey, what a fucking shit heel. I love MJF. I love booing him. <laughs> it's f it's fun, and that's what it's supposed to be. And can you? But he's only like 24, dude. 24. He's got he's got another two decades ahead of him, probably. It's crazy. Like I'm only half paying attention at this point to the game. <laughs> I mean, I played this longer than I had originally planned on, but, you know, got a good conversation about wrestling, so I was like, whatever, let's keep going. Oh, for fuck's sake. Ow. When you have Luchasaurus, maybe fans, the first AEW fans, yeah, like, like Darby Allen, like, oh, hi, Lorenzo, how are you doing? Um, okay, I should clarify. Darby Allen is like close to my favorite guy in AEW that I wasn't familiar with before. I think Luchasaurus is number one. That dude is incredible. How can you be that big and that athletic? It's nuts. He might be the most over thing right now in the in the company, and he hasn't even wrestled that much. Ouch. Yeah. 
Oh, you prick. Oh, would you stand still? Boy, Rolento's annoying. Can't grab the little prick. But I'm just amazed at everything Luchasaurus can do. And their promos on the on, on AEW, like the little video packages they do, those are so fun. They're, they're, everybody's clearly having fun with these video packages. Like the little, uh, uh, uh the, the Jurassic Express one they did, that was pretty funny. There's a baby source over there. Oh, it's Marco Stunt. He's being very naughty. <laughs> God damn it, Rolento. I wonder if London Enterprise is coming to AEW soon. I have to, I have to think so. They, they've kind of made little hints at it, right? Like, uh, do you remember when uh, was was this past week when when um, let's just why can't I hit him? Let's just pick up a grenade, am I? Ow! Am I seriously gonna lose the roll until this is embarrassing? Fuck! This is my last life. I'm gonna die to Rolento. Dude, you're a prick! Sit still! Uh, but yeah, if, if you remember uh, Jericho's promo, where he was doing the list of people that would never, ever uh, get to fight him for the, the, the title or whatever, at one point he says Marty, and then gets stopped. Like, what Marty is there in um, AEW, right? So, I, I think that was supposed to be a tease. Yeah. Ah, shit. Yeah. I don't know a whole lot about Marty Skrull, but, like, what I have seen, uh, I, I'm intrigued. Okay, I, I seriously don't know what I'm doing with him. Am I supposed to pick up a grenade? No. Oh, you can't continue. What a rip! <coughs> um, sure. Let's put in a name just because. Whoa! Fig what? I get to put in my full thing. Well, you got the first two initials. If I think is, uh, I guess, I guess we're the one that we start bringing. Bring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's another thing. I love being the elite. Like, I've only recently started Metro tuning into that. Oh, it's a great little show. Has been ruled by violence it's hilariously corny. Years. I love it. A fact which the newly elected mayor and former street fighter Mike Hager plans to change. Oh boy. At the center of the problem. How long was this one? Known as Mad Gear. Mad Gear controls all of them. Uh, whoops. Wrong thing. Wrong thing. When they learned of Hager's plans, they took immediate action to bring. Wow, that wasn't as long as I thought. Under their control. Less than 35 minutes. Sometime in 1992. Hello, Mike. Hey, sometime in 1992, huh? I wonder if 1992 was the original date. Because Final Fight came out in 89, I think. I believe. Right? I wonder if it was 1992 then, or if they just did like, oh, okay, the second CD version is out in 93. So, well, I think it said 93. Your daughter for your cooperation. Your daughter for your cooperation. Uh, what's this what on my tablet? Who is this? Okay. <clears throat> I think that's finally a wrap for me. So, YouTube... You son of a... You're son of a... <laughs>
<laughs> Calm down, Mike. <laughs> all right, YouTube. Thank you all for watching. And not sure where I'll be streaming again, but um, you know, I, I hope I have to do it a little bit more often. Take it easy, folks.